thank you for joining us on this edition of Clubcast. First and foremost, I want to thank our supporters, our donors, and our entire community for all they do for our children and teens in St. Lucie County. I think it's important that gratitude is always shared with those that are working on behalf of our entire community. We are so thankful at the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Lucie County of all the people who are making a huge difference in our youth every single day. I want to thank the St. Lucie Public Schools for allowing us this opportunity to share the things that we love to do and we get to do. I want to thank all the nonprofits out there that, are, that have the heart and the courage to go out there and do the things that everyone just can't do. There's so many great nonprofits out there that is, it's, I can't name them all, but I can tell you with those nonprofits, we are so appreciative of the talents that they have and bring to our community. Today, I have the privilege to have my friend and board member, Jack Barrett, who him and I are gonna share some, 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 some stories. We're gonna share some opportunities that I think that will benefit not just Boys and Girls Clubs, but will benefit the entire community. So thank you, Jack, for joining us today. Will, thank you very, very much for this opportunity, man. I'm happy to be here. You know, Jack, uh, I remember when, before you were a board member, and actually you worked for us a little bit, and we're going to talk about some of those things. Okay. I remember meeting you for the first time when you were with First T. Mm. It's the First T, right? At that time, it was the, the First T. So now, now it was First T. First T, correct. And uh, you came up with one of our big supporters and you started talking. <laughs> and I looked at Melanie at the time and said, oh, we want to hire that guy. We want that guy. <laughs> Hopefully our supporter's not watching right now. But we didn't go after you. It just happened to work out that you ended up working for Boys and Girls Club. It's all good, man. I would love for you to share a little bit about <clears throat> you and, and your role, maybe a little bit with First Tee, but then also, of course, your role with Boys and Girls Clubs. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, that, that whole relationship started because of your willingness to partner with the First Tee. Um, as you know, the First Tee is all about youth development um, and our way of giving, I guess you could say, the kids in the community an opportunity is really getting them on the golf course. But you made it possible for us to have such a broad reach with a lot of kids in all your different areas. Um, that relationship is still solid today. As you know, we, uh, during COVID last year, the first tee up here in the Treasure Coast had their best year ever with kid involvement. So we were able to give them a safe environment, be outdoors, work together with you. But that relationship has really come full circle when during COVID they shut down and the opportunity came for me to come with you and uh, honored to work with you and the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Lucie County as your uh, vice president of development and still, you know, I guess you could say foster that relationship with the first take. So it's come full circle to where now that partnership is stronger than ever. Um, you'll talk a little bit, I know you will, in, in a short while about the West Side opportunity we have how that same uh, supporter who uh, was at that first meeting when you and I first met has helped us to really uh, get to a point where we're going to bring a state-of-the-art facility for the kids uh, with the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Lucie County and really the kids in the surrounding communities, Fort Pierce, Fort St. Lucie. It's going to be huge, and I'm really, really excited about that. That's awesome, Jack. I know you and I could probably go a whole hour on a show just Easily. on one or two subjects. Easily. But, you know, we're going to start this particular show off about relationships because one of the things that you started to talk about was mm -hmm. it was the building of the relationship mm -hmm. block between First T and Boys and Girls Clubs mm -hmm. and how that, that relationship did, didn't stay stagnant, but it got better, mm -hmm. essentially is what you said. Correct. And so, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. What we have done and what um, First T has brought to the table has just made so many significant uh, moves forward mm -hmm. as we continue to grow our our teens and our children and our community. I want to stay on the subject of relationships. What are your thoughts in terms of nonprofits and building relationships with supporters and donors, not just from a financial standpoint, mm -hmm. 
but from a relationship standpoint, right? Because we live in, in a more relational type of setting mm -hmm. as the years go on. It used to just be business, business, business. Correct. Heart, heart, heart. Yep. But it was like not this middle ground of the relationships that we want to build with our supporters, donors, and such. So share from your perspective and your experience over a nice amount of years of doing this kind of work. Well, you know, the bottom line is, as you mentioned earlier, the relationship with our uh, significant donor, which started the ball rolling with First Team Boys and Girls Clubs. With any donor or any corporate partner that we have in the community, <clears throat> the reality is, is that we have a fantastic product, and it's really our kids, our youth in the area. And it's really hard to not get excited when you introduce a potential donor or supporter to what it is we do with those kids. And you've heard me say this phrase all the time. The relationships are really not about the amount of money they're willing to give or the amount of money you're willing to ask for or suggest that you need. It's really about how they can make an impact on our kids. My job, our job, as board members and people in the community, especially nonprofits, is to really introduce those people to what it is we do. Show them what the kids are getting from what we're offering them in the community. Show them the excitement that the kids have, safe environment. It's a place where they can go, do their homework, hang out with their friends. Their parents know they're going to be in a safe environment. Obviously, with COVID being what it is, we're exercising all of the COVID restrictions and guidelines so that the kids are absolutely safe, not just emotionally, but also physically. But the relationships are important because I think I work and have worked for many, many years, and, and I know you do too, because we have like minds with that particular idea about how to foster relationships. It's about showing donors or potential supporters um, it's the power of attraction rather than promotion. So you're not going to walk in there and say, hey, we're really great, this is what we're doing. That's really not what it's about. It's about, hey, let me show you what the kids are benefiting from. Let me show you what the kids are getting from what we're doing in the community and how your help, whether it's financial, physical, or otherwise, can have an impact on that. And that's really what's important when it comes to relationships in the community and long-term relationships, not just one and dones. You know, it's, it takes a lot of work early on to maintain and start those relationships. But once they understand what your mission is, it's really easy to keep that going and to foster it and to bring it full circle to make that relationship such as the first T even stronger now than it ever was. That's, I, I feel like you just gave some great advice for a lot of people. And a lot of people, to include myself, pay, would pay a lot of money to mm -hmm. hear that kind of information. It's pretty direct, right? I mean, it is. In my, man, in, in my estimation, uh, building relationships is important. And mm -hmm. I know that uh, for our staff, you know, they're the ones that are on the front lines every day. Absolutely. And this year, it's going to be about building relationships. Mm -hmm. And we're going to we're going <laughs> to use that word a lot because our young people, uh, both children and teens, have been through a lot throughout this pandemic. Oof. Wear a mask, take a mask off, maybe wear the mask, maybe take the mask off. But at the end of the day, when you're building relationships, mm -hmm. some of those things are not as bad as it may seem. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, as a community, when the adults look at the stress levels that they have, mm -hmm. uh, think about our children and teens, what they must be Oof. going through, mm. right? Mom, dad, <clears throat> uncle, grandparents, you know, some in the uproar, some not in the mm -hmm. uproar. But think of all the emotions that our teens and our children are going through by listening to what they see and what they hear. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for them, they get to kind of hold a lot of that inside. Right. They don't get to express it like us adults. And um, we've had many, many meetings with board members like yourself and our staff to say that this year, we're going to focus on relationship building, mm -hmm. relationship building with our donors and supporters, mm -hmm. but we're also going to focus on relationship building with our staff and our children mm -hmm. and our teens to make sure that they're getting what they need. And it's not always financially motivated. No. Sometimes it's just sitting and listening mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. breaking bread together, mm -hmm. but finding some common ways that we could work together. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, and you, you said a mouthful when you talk about the impact on the families, the kids, uh, the parents, the virtual learning that they have to do a lot of this from home. Yes. Puts a lot of strain on the family environment. But in the end, it's really about giving the kids the environment to be kids. Right. To be safe and be kids. I mean, we, just look at anything that we're posting on our social media. You, if you look at any of the kids, they are smiling every single time you see them at the club. That's right. Because it's giving them an opportunity to just be kids in a safe environment. And I think that's what the parents appreciate. I think that's what the whole community appreciates, what we're doing. Well, you know, um, again, it's about relationships. And when I think about, um, like, this summer into the future program, mm -hmm. it was all about building relationships mm -hmm. with our teens and mm -hmm. giving them opportunities that they would otherwise not have. And, you know, for a young woman or a young man to go out and fish mm -hmm. and catch a bass mm -hmm. and know it's a bass, not just a fish, mm -hmm. is uh, one of those joys that I get to witness every day. Or for kids to get an opportunity to go to a NASCAR uh, race mm -hmm. or get to go to a baseball yeah, game. Yeah, Mets game. For Mets sure. game. I mean, we have so many cool partners. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Jack? As, as a board member uh, that you are, I want us to continue to build those relationships over this next year mm -hmm. with other boards, potentially, and talk about how organizations could work together mm -hmm. on behalf of kids and teens, right. period. That's what it's about. And I, I think that we are primed. Uh, Boys and Girls Clubs, you and I didn't create the name. No. Right? No. But we are here in this organization that's going to allow us to do some really big things mm -hmm. and really shine for the community. And so um, I am super excited to have you on the board now. Uh, and and I tell you, it's because of the relationships that you have built that it was an easy transition from staff to board. I don't know how that went down like that because I used to be <laughs> your boss and now you're my boss. But again, it's relationships. It's all in the big plan, man. It's all in the big plan. <laughs> That's awesome. And and you know, listen, I mean, it's um, when you talk about the the upcoming year, um, there's always going to be challenges. Yes. And how we react to those challenges is important. And we set the tone for everyone from parents to kids to the staff. And with the upcoming events and opportunities we have, and I know you're going to talk about this with Westside. Yes. With uh, the 25th Street Project. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity there for us to embrace the other nonprofits. So I think that, that I'm looking forward to. Jack, you, I can't wait when we come back on the second half of the show to talk about all those exciting things that are about to happen for not just Boys and Girls Clubs, but for the community. And if you haven't had an opportunity to be part of a Boys and Girls Clubs, watch a couple of these clips and it'll show you just a little glimpse of what we do every day. These are more than just the sounds of a safe place to go after school. These are the sounds of interest being ignited and of mentors making an impact. The sounds of tutoring and tech and health and fitness and arts and music. At Boys and Girls Clubs, we don't do just one thing. We do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid who comes through those doors. Because whatever it takes is what it takes to build great futures. Great futures start here. Thank you for having us back. Jack and I were talking just prior to a uh, commercial break about some exciting um, things that are going to be happening in our community. And um, what, what excites me about growth is we get the opportunity to serve more 
children, and teens. We get the opportunity to bring more kids to places that they otherwise may not have the opportunity for a variety of reasons. And some could be that parents are just busy. Mm -hmm. But I am super excited to talk about a couple of projects that are coming in the upcoming uh, year and a half to two years, and some that are already in the planning stages. And let me just put a caveat out there. Good things take time. Mm -hmm. And one or two of the projects that we have going on are going to take some time, but in the long run, we're going to be able to take that fifth grader and have them ready when they're sixth or seventh or eighth grader. We're going to be able to take that ninth grader and then have the additional facilities when they become a 10th and 11th grader. That's all part of growth. And I think it's just going to be some great opportunities for for um, our entire community. So I'm going to get back with Jack. And um, Jack's an avid golf player, just so everyone knows. <laughs> and Jack is sometimes a little disrespectful to me because he says, <laughs> we'll hit some long, but he hits some wrong. So I'm okay with that. But I want to talk about some golf opportunities mm. that we have because we have an awesome community. And you could speak to this from a different angle than most. Mm. The game of golf is not just about hitting a ball and seeing how far you can get it down Correct. the course, Correct. right? How, whether if you can keep it on the green. I mean, the pros do that. And, and of course, people who are avid golfers. But when we talk about youth development, mm -hmm. the golf <clears throat> is an opportunity to provide a great avenue for youth to learn etiquette, learn a little science, mm -hmm. learn a little math, and a whole bunch of other things that they can get from golf. And then I want you to go ahead and share just some of the, the things in your experience with Boys and Girls Clubs and other agencies that you work with during, the, during your golf days uh, with First Tee. But I also want to talk about the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Lucie County's Lighthouse Youth Development Center, mm -hmm. which is going to play hugely in our community as well as our West Side Complex, this big complex that is going to allow us to just serve more kids mm -hmm. and do more in our community. Well, I mean, first of all, the both projects, when you talk about good things take time, uh, these have been in the in the process of uh, being developed, if you will, for some time. Prior to me even coming on board, you've been working on the Lighthouse Project for a long time with Larry Lee. But now that Westside has come into play, just to give folks a little idea about what's taking place, with Lighthouse, uh, with the Lighthouse Youth Project, that is really about engaging our older teens, if you will, uh, or tweens, the middle schoolers, at a location where they can feel safe. It's gonna be a clubhouse environment, but Along with that, is there's going to be some golf involved, but with that, you get an opportunity to introduce them to the back-end operations of how a golf or, uh, business is run, if you will. Uh, how do you maintain it? You can talk about agronomy. You can talk about grasses. You can talk about plants. You can talk about a lot of different things in that particular location. The West Side Project is going to be a nice seamless buttonhole for that because what's going to happen with the Lighthouse Youth Project is that they're really going to be ready to play golf by the time they get there. West Side is going to be the opportunity with a state-of-the-art facility, which we are building currently uh, in partnership with the First Tee of the Treasure Coast, uh, is really going to be an opportunity to introduce our kids and other organizations' kids to the game of golf, but also the things, the byproducts of golf, which is the STEM programs, the science, technology, engineering, and math, also, probably STEAM. We can add some arts into that, too. Um, but also, it's really about the social, emotional well-being of the children and introducing all of that while they're playing golf and having fun, and they don't even know they're getting it. So that's the seamless learning that they talk about, mastery-driven learning. We're going to be the facilitators to make that happen in both locations. I honestly see that blowing up when it does happen, and again, it's probably going to happen within the next year or so. Uh, maybe even sooner, maybe with West Side. We'll see how that progresses. But the reality is, in the end, there's going to be a lot of kids impacted. Uh, but 
as you may or may not have mentioned earlier, you have other organizations uh, partnering with us at Westside that are on site, other nonprofits with children, the special needs community, the autistic community. Uh, you've got kids that are at risk. All these kids are going to be introduced and their families to the West Side Project, what's going on there. And again, eventually segueing over to the Lighthouse Youth Project. Yeah, you know, Jack, you, you articulated that very well. And I was <clears> just thinking uh, the last three years we put together our Into the Future program mm -hmm. in partnership with a lot of just amazing people. Mm -hmm. The city of Fort Pierce, the city of Port St. Lucie, mm -hmm. St. Lucie County, Career Source, Children's Services Council. I mean, individual donors, corporate donors, just people who care about youth development. And when you talk about um, the Lighthouse Development, uh, Youth Development Center, or Teen Center, rather, it's Lighthouse Teen Development Center, that's going to provide the kids that part on the golf side. Mm -hmm. But the, we want the teens to practically run this thing. There you go. Right? We, we want to empower become, them to do We want to empower them. We want them to learn marketing. We want mm -hmm. them to learn how, to, how finance works. We want to mm -hmm. learn business plans. We want them to learn how to be business people. Mm -hmm. We want them to be their own CEOs and CFOs and COOs and vice presidents and teach them some basic skills of mm -hmm. those levels while they're young because they are bright. Our teens are so bright. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, we as adults can make it a little difficult for them. But if you give a teen a product mm -hmm. and you tell them to go with it, with a little supervision, mm -hmm. they will shock you every time. And we've witnessed that over the last three years in our Into the Future program. Mm -hmm. And it's a strong program. It's going to get stronger because we're committed to making sure that our teens are prepared for their future. Well, and all the things you just mentioned really give... The kids really don't know that they have these opportunities until we introduce them to them. Once we introduce them to the children, to, to the older teens, whatever the age level, they get super excited because they never knew they could do this. And we're giving them the opportunity to do that. The other thing, too, is that they're also learning the very important skills, such as communication skills. There are uh, also problem-solving skills. There's going to be difficult customers. There's going to be difficult coworkers. How do we how do we solve those issues? How do we work together as a team and help solve those problems? They don't know about that until we introduce them to that. And once they find out, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Well, I want to brag on a gentleman uh, just for his heart um, and wanting to uh, ensure that the Lighthouse Teen Development. Um, center is done and that's uh, Larry Lee Jr. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know that when he was in a legislate uh legislator uh legislature he um was just one of those uh one of those representatives that made sure that we received our funding across the state of Florida. And that's important because you can't do the work without dollars. Correct. And uh he was a big supporter and he continues to support. He has a lot on his plate mm. and uh but I could tell you that this particular project, what I'm excited about that Lighthouse Youth Development Center, that Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Louis County Lighthouse uh, Teen Center, is that it's going to not just be for teens, but it's going to be built in such a way, it's going to be two stories, mm -hmm. and it's going to be built in such a way that the teens can enjoy it, the community can enjoy it in a different way that... <clears throat> it's 12,000 square foot of building and it's going to allow for events to happen, local events to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to allow for those birthday parties, those weddings. Mm -hmm. It's going to allow for people to have opportunities to do some things mm -hmm. and that, that they maybe would have to go far to do it. It's going to be inexpensive to be able to put on some of those events for the community. It's going to be an opportunity for other community partners to join in mm -hmm. and look at their specific skills. There, there are some really talented nonprofits out there that are in the arts and in music, mm -hmm. and they're going to have a facility that they can say, hey, boys and girls clubs, let's join in. Let's get together. Let's there work together on this specific project, whatever that project is. And I can tell you between myself, you, and the board, as well as our staff, 
we almost never say no. Mm. Because that's not our goal is to say no. Our goal is if it's going to benefit the families in St. Lucie County, it's going to be more than likely a yes. So we're going to do everything in our power. Mm -hmm. We're going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. Even if it means that we may step on a person's toes. And it's not <laughs> intentional, but when it comes to our kids and teens, we're going to do whatever it takes. Absolutely. And, and one of the things that... Uh that I learned uh, when I came on board to, to work with you in the Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, St. Lucie County, was that, uh, yeah, we can do that. And then after we say, yes, we're going to do it, we're gonna like, okay, how are we going to do it? <laughs> and then you know what? We figure it out. Yeah. We figure it out as a team, especially when it comes to the kids in the community. We'll figure out a way to make it work. That's right. Yeah. And I, I think that, um, you know, any smart leader mm -hmm. knows that, you bring the smartest and the brightest people around, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Any smart leader brings together a board of directors that are relentless mm -hmm. in the standard, right? Making sure our kids are in a safe environment, making sure that our programs are being ran with fidelity, mm -hmm. questioning what our financials look like, mm -hmm. question if we have the abilities to do what we say we can do, and when you have a board of directors that are that serious about what the next steps are in our community, that makes it just all the more better. Absolutely. You look at what's coming up, right, um, in the very near future. We have a lot of big businesses coming. Mm -hmm. You have Cheney Brothers, you have FedEx, you have Amazon. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are big box places that are going to be employing 500, 700, 1,000 people and what does that mean? That means there's going to be a lot of kids and teens moving in our community. You know what, Jack? We have to be ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as you know, St. Lucie in general is really blowing up at this time. So, you know, for us, we're kind of staying ahead of the curve, if you will, by being, uh, um, I guess you could say, wise about what we need to do to be ready. Uh, and I think we're almost at that point now, especially with all these big companies coming in, plus obviously the families and the jobs, everything follows after that, and we'll be ready. Jack, we have just about two minutes mm -hmm. left, and in that two minutes, um, and I know some of these things you helped us get through during COVID. Uh, one was we ended up doing a chili cook-off mm -hmm. virtually. Uh, we were able to put on a golf tournament in a safe way. Correct. Um, and we've done a couple of other events um, I know we have Chile coming up. We have a golf tournament. Mm -hmm. um, how are we doing? How are we feeling about that from a board's perspective? Spectacular. Thanks to Charles, um, Michelle, and the rest of the committee, uh, the golf committee. We're already uh, at capacity right now. We're already sold out a month ahead of time, over a month ahead of time. Uh, we have uh, Last year, we had 135 golfers during COVID. No one got sick. Everyone was obviously practicing guidelines and CDC rules and regulations. This year, we're going to do the same. Uh, we're doing better than we were last year. Last year was a record year. So with that being said, we also have uh, LPGA pros coming in to help us out with that event. Uh, Mackenzie Lang and Gabby Power coming in for the day. Help us raise some additional funds. Make it a fun day. Um, and I know a lot of our long and wrong golfers that will be playing that day, including yourself, yes. will love the opportunity to uh, try to beat these pros while they're helping us out with the fundraising. But we're way ahead of schedule with everything, and everyone's real, real excited about this year. That's awesome. Well, Jack, as we close out, I want to say thank you for your leadership and just really taking us to the next level, so to speak, and speaking with the golf community and some other communities and really just being fun about doing, getting it done. And um, I think we're in a different era, and I think you're mm -hmm. right You're right for what we need. Thank you all for joining us on this edition of Clubcast. There was a lot spoken today, and I can tell you, between Jack Barrett, our board member, and myself, Will Armstead, CEO of Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County, and all of our staff and board members, we thank you for being a part of us, and we want to continue to shine for our teens and our children so that they can have a bright future.